Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about field strength and how to calculate, calculate it. Now in previous videos, uh, on my generic video, fields video, I told you that field strength was donated by the force divided by the property affected by the field. So in gravitational fields, field strength is represented by the letter little g and you've seen this before we say that g on earth is 9.81 meters per second per second. Now g here, okay, uh, would be f, the force that the object felt, divided by the mass of that object that's in the field. So for example, if I'm in the earth's field, that mass would be my mass, but if, because the earth is in the sun's field, if I was trying to work out the gravitational field strength from the sun, the object that would be in the field would be the earth. Okay, and what this force equation here is quite important because the force of the object, okay, in a radial field is um, told by Newton's law of gravitation. So in a radial field, that force is represented by Newton's law of gravitation. F equals big G, the gravitational constant, M1, M2 over R squared. And what this means I can do is I can actually put this formula in here, and I end up with this, that G equals um, big G, M1, M2, whoops, over R squared, all over M. And since one of, when we're looking at gravitational force, one of these M's is the object that creates the field, and one of these is the object that is in the field, okay? And this M here is the object that's in the field. What it means is the, one of the M's cancels, okay? So the thing that cancels is the object that's in the field, not the object that's making the field. Which leaves us with the formula of G M over R squared. And what this is really important because it tells us, okay, so if I just write it a bit clearer up here, that the gravitational field strength is big G M over R squared. What it tells us is that the field strength of feeling is due to the object, the field we are in. So we are in the Earth's gravitational field. So we feel a field strength based on the Earth's mass. It doesn't matter how much mass I have, the acceleration I would feel because of the Earth is dependent only on the Earth's mass. Now, we can calculate that. I can actually use uh, some data and we can see what G is, of course, for the Earth. So if I just grab this here, I'm just going to grab this off the board. Let's put some numbers in for this. So we're going to see it at the Earth's surface. So I'm going to be using the information from the data sheet. So the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And the radius, the average radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put the information into the uh, calculation here. So G equals uh, G uh, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times by 5.97, times 10 to the 24, all over 6.37 times 10 to the 6 squared. Okay, so 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times by 5.97 times 10 to the 24, divided by 6.37, Six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven times by five point nine seven times ten to the twenty four. Oops, <laughs> I did that wrong. I did plus eleven. That's why it's going wrong. Six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven times by five point nine seven times ten to the twenty four divided by six point three seven times ten to the six squared. I get an answer of nine point eight three meters per second squared, which is what we're expecting. We expect and we use 9.81 for the gravitational field strength on Earth. 
Now, this is actually really useful, okay? Because what this uh, formula allows us to do is to work out the gravitational field strength at any one point. But there are other things you could do as well. So, for example, in my previous video, I worked out the resultant force of this penguin. And I found out this penguin, between these two planets, planet X and the Earth, had a resultant force of 40.22. But I then could work out the resultant field strength of this penguin too by using this formula here. That I know that G is the force that he's feeling over his mass because it's him being affected in the field. So I've got 40.22 over 100. So my gravitational field strength, my resultant gravitational field strength would be 0 0.4022 meters per second squared. So by using this formula, that gravitational field strength is force divided by the mass of the object that's feeding the fields, I can find the resultant gravitational field strength. Okay. So this idea of field strength being the force, and it's the resultant force that you feel, resultant force that you feel, divided by the thing that's actually affected by the field. Firstly, you can get this formula here, which is really useful because it means that I can work out what G is at any point in the field. But this formula is also really useful because when I'm dealing with more than one field, I can work out the resultant gravitational field strength. Okay. What I'm going to do from here, actually, I'm actually going to take it a little bit uh, further. I'm actually going to work out the resultant field strength in a different way. So I'm going to use the formula that we worked out, which was G M over R squared. And I'm going to work out the gravitational field strength this way and the gravitational field strength this way. And I'm going to find the result. I'm going to compare it to this answer here. So... The gravitational field strength from the Earth, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times by 5.97 times 10 to the 24, all over 1 times 10 to the 8 squared. The 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times by 5.97 times 10 to the 24, divided by 1 times 10 to the 8 squared is... 0.04 meters per second squared and the gravitational field strength from x 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 6 times 10 to the 25 all over 1 times 10 to the 8 squared 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 6 times 10 to the 25 divided by 1 times 10 to the 8 squared is 0.4 meters per second squared. And again, I can use a vector diagram. So I'm going this way, 0.04, and I'm going up, 0.4. And I could, of course, work out the resultant here. Okay, so square plus 0.04 squared, square root the answer, and I get an answer of... 0.402 meters per second squared, which is what I got here. Okay, so this formula is quite powerful. Using gravitational field is force divided by the thing that's affected by the field, but I can find the resultant gravitational field strength using this formula here too. Okay, so field strength will always be defined as the resultant force the object feels in that field divided by the property of that object. However, what we can do is we can completely ignore the object that's in the field and only slowly look at what the field's actually doing to that object. And that is gravitational field strength.